Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. First, let me show you what I had to do to get the tail controls hooked up. And then let's get it stripped down and ready to cover. Before we get back to the stomp, um, with my YouTube channel, uh, the B-17 Bomber, uh, the restoration of the real one, um, it went from about 12, 13,000 views within the past week and a half, and I think now we're sitting at 42 or 43,000 views. So uh, there was a virtual explosion of people watching it. Uh, and I just want to throw down a little shout out for everybody that, that did view that one. Um, I'm planning on heading back out uh, to see Mike out in Wrangell, Illinois um, to do another video because I figured I'd be doing yearly uh, updates on it. Uh, please, down below uh, in the comments, uh, if you've got any questions you would like me to ask Mike, or if you want me to focus on a couple different uh, parts of the plane and the state that it's in, uh, go ahead and leave them down below. Uh, so what I'll do is when, uh, when I do go out there, um, I'll have a little more stuff prepped because that first video, the one that I did last year, um, I'd been out there and I'd seen that, uh, the B-17, you know, once a year for, I don't know, almost two decades now because I've never actually recorded a video like that where I was doing a so kind of like an interview. Um, I was very unprepared for it so we just kind of flopped our way through that one. It came out okay uh, but if I could possibly have some questions uh, or a little more focus from you guys is what you'd like to see uh, with the restoration. Um, it'll give me a little bit better direction and hopefully it'll flow a little bit better when it comes time for me to edit. So anyway, let's get back to the stomp. All right, I do have the tail controls hooked up now. I'll bring it back around and show you what I had to do on that side. I can't move it too much because it's not glued in and it's gonna to wanna to fall out. Uh, as you saw from my little teaser in the last video, instead of having this rotate down, I had it rotate closer to a 45 degree angle. The way it hooks up right there and by that everything works great on it i had to do some stuff inside the fuselage so there's full throw so i do have full throw with it so i'm happy with that and for the elevator you'll see i'm going to go ahead and have to trim this down but that'll be done after it gets covered and everything but i've got everything set up and all the controls work great now this piece here of course i'm going to go ahead and glue this piece back in again i was still thinking about leaving a window um, and I, I'd like to I'd like to do it but something's telling me not to if I wanted to I can have a box a rectangular piece cut out here so when I cover it because it's covered in fabric so the fabric itself become a structural member of the plane because it is glued it's adhered through the nitrate dope to the wood if I wanted to I can have an open slot here so if I did have to go in there for any reason inside I could just cut it and then uh, because if you've ever worked with uh, with fabric, you can cover it. You can put patches in, and they blend in very nicely. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll come on in and either epoxy it down here or hot glue. It is st st stiff enough inside there. I can probably leave that the way it is. And then just go ahead and up front here, I'm going to put a cross beam across here. So that way I can cradle these two in place and then glue it up front. So sand it down, glue it in up front, and that way there's no sliding back and forth. Now, because when I was moving these things back and forth, there was so much play on the inside, I had to cut another hatch through. And then on the inside, you can see I made little ladders. Um, so what this is doing is this is just coming across and then it's cradling the tube inside the, the wire inside the tube so it's not going anywhere made one on that side still had a little bit of play so i made one on that side as well so this is all set up nice and tight and now i don't know if you can see it when i move it back and forth they don't flex at all so that's what i had to do so this piece here will just get glued back in and when that gets glued i'll come by with some filler around the outside of it saying it's smooth so you won't even know that this was opened up so so that's where we're at and now it's time to take the rest of this stuff off and let's get to sanding 
All right, if you guys have not seen one of my multiple videos where I'm actually covering uh, with either fabric or um, silk span, uh, what I've always liked to use was nitrate dope. A lot of people like butyrate dope. I like nitrate just because I just don't have time to wait for that stuff to dry because nitrate dope, it's something that if you use uh, within like about 15-20 minutes you can start sanding on it because it's a lacquer finish. It dries very quickly. It's uh, it, And it's not that I don't like butyrate dope. I've just never bought it. Just because I know the way this stuff works and I like how fast you can work with it. So let me go ahead and I will uh, change cameras and I'll show you how I mix it. And uh, let's go. Alright, we do have a brand new gallon here. And I did, it had some more in here and you could feel it, but when I looked inside, it rust. That's, uh, yeah, this is probably about two years old, year old. Um, unfortunately, it didn't, fare, it didn't fare too well with the flooding I had down here in the basement. So it's just moisture. You can see it started out around the top, so it didn't have a good seal, pulled it inside and it rusted. So, and the nitrate dope itself, it, it's it's solidified so at this point it's just worthless i'm just gonna let it dry out a little bit more just before i uh dispose of it so it was a good thing that i did contact gino at trimcraft aviation and get another gallon of this stuff so i'm gonna go ahead this was the nitrate dope i used uh, on the last plane which was the warlock um, and it's thick just because over time it does start to thicken back up again so that's pretty much about what it is right now brand new inside there so i'm going to finish filling this up back up to halfway up and i'm just going to get some lacquer thinner they want you to use really good stuff i've used the good old cheap stuff and it works just great so when you put this in it's just how much time it takes you to stir it to get it blended in it's usually a good five minutes of stirring uh, just to make sure that this and this are in complete agreement with each other so let me go ahead and pull some out of here and fill it up inside this mason jar until I get it to where I want it. And as you can see, it actually flows out very nicely. And we're about halfway through with that one, so I'll go ahead, cap all this off, and then I'll fill it up the rest of the way and start stirring. All right, in this episode, let me introduce you to the cast of players. All right, you've already saw my little explanation of what's in here. This is the nitrate dope, so this is the, the, the Wag Arrow non-tautening, designed not to shrink. The shrinkage of this is minimal. It's like maybe, maybe 2% at the most. Uh, if you went with the non-tautening, uh, it will shrink until it breaks your wings in half. Um, not designed for model airplanes, uh, but the non tautening does. So what we're going to do is when we, when we go ahead and try to get everything set up where we're going to cover. The first thing is we're going to take the nitrate dope and I normally use this. It's just a regular uh, chip brush. They're cheap. It works really good for just once the, once the plane, all the wood is sanded, you're going to get the initial sand done first and I normally go down to about 180 and then it's going to come in and then put a coat of uh, nitrate dope on and when that sets up put another coat on. Once the second coat's done and dry come back with the 180 and just because what it's going to do is it's going to make make the balsa it's going to make the grain stand up so you're just going to come over here just do a very light sanding to sand them down. Put another coat on. Do one, sand, do one more sand. I normally do hit it with a 240 and then I'll put one more coat on and when that's dry come back with some 320 and it's done. So the first thing I'll do on the plane is I will be making sure that all the holes that need to be filled are filled and everything is ready to cover before I start putting the nitrate dope on because I want to have all that heavy duty work done and that is going to be probably about five hours of sanding that's probably about how long it's going to take me. Yeah, about five hours. So anyway, uh, so let me show you real quick. For those that haven't seen the, uh, the, 
the other videos with me doing this, especially the Taylorcraft. If you want to watch the Taylorcraft video, I'll leave a link to it down in the, the uh, description. And then uh, it's where I sit outside with a good buddy, my Paul, and I'm showing you how you go ahead and do this. But this is just a little uh, heads up for those I haven't seen before. So nitrate dope, when the wood's bare, you're just going to come over and you're going to go ahead and just paint a coat on. And you can go heavy with the first coat because it is going to absorb, it's going to pull all of it in. So I'll do both sides real quick. And we're not going to set up a, a timer on this one. But the way this stuff sets up, it's going to be real quick. So I'll go ahead and leave this off to the side, just sitting off the side while I'm explaining everything else to you. All right, once we get, so this is, so once we get the initial nitrate dope put on the, on the fuselage, on the tail, on the wing, and it's all sanded, ready to cover, then the next player, the next actor, will be Polytech. And Polytech is what they use on real airplanes. Um, it's a really good product. It's through Consolidated Aircraft. Um, I get my stuff through, just like the other stuff, Wag Arrow. It's probably about an hour and a half north of where I live. So if I have to drive up there, I don't have to play. Ha I don't have to pay a hazmat fees to have it shipped to my house. So what it cost me to drive up there is a lot less than a hazmat fee. So what I do with this, it's going to go into a dish, and they, you don't have to. It's probably half gone. You don't have to thin it. Um, if you want to thin it. You can thin it with acetone or MEK. Acetone is a little safer, uh, let's just say, on the uh, on the brain than MEK is. If you're going to use MEK, because I will clean the brushes out. This little brush here is what I use for Polytech. Just because I've cut it down and sanded it through the sander to the point where it works out very nice for the Polytech for painting it along the line where this is going to become the glue. So you're going to put a thin, so let me bring it out here. So say that this piece here, so say that I was going to go ahead and let's just use this as just a piece, even though this is going to get glued back in. Say I was going to put some uh, poly tack here, dip into my little cup and then pull it out and then just go ahead and just go across with a straight line and you kind of want it thick. So what I do is I normally go on, uh, I put a thin coat on and then I'll put a thicker coat on and as I'm putting it on, I'm very slowly working my way down the fuselage and I like to because it takes a little bit longer for this stuff to set up the nitrate dope. I'll pull the fabric over the top of it and pull it down so the poly tack starts to come up through the weave and then I'll just come across with my finger and then just smooth it out. And once you're smoothing it out you're locking that weave into the poly tack. So it is a cement so it's an adhesive. So when this stuff sets up all the way it's not only stuck to the plane but it's stuck to itself. So uh, when you normally have to take parts of this off, you got to hit it with some heat just to warm it up and then it'll peel right off. But this stuff is really good. So the Polytech, like I said, MEK, wear a respirator. If you're using it and you've got a respirator, use it. Because I always use mine uh, when you're using this stuff because uh, MEK is one of those uh, chemicals that when you use it, you're never going to know when you're going to hit the floor. Yeah, it's nasty stuff. So... Uh, acetone, we've all used acetone. Uh, it's not as uh, it's not as vicious on your on, on, on your well-being as MEK is. So, and then the last character in this play is aluminum paste. I don't know if I'm going to use it on this plane, but in real life, planes use aluminum paste when they're when they're using this product. The old school used aluminum paste, and what you're doing is two things. The first thing you're doing is you're really blocking UV rays from getting to the fabric on the plane because UV rays and nylon fabrics they don't like each other at all and so that's what we'll start break down of the fabric. I don't have to put this on the plane because the only time the plane's outside is when I'm flying it other than that it stays inside. The reason why I put it on there is so that it does not allow light to come through the wings. So it's just usually my final uh, final coat of dope with the light coming through the so that way you're blocking the light coming through what I may try this time I'll do a test piece and you'll see it on the test piece I may just shoot some uh, automotive primer on it because that'll do the same thing but on the Taylor craft I was lifting paint was lifting and it's per primarily because I did not know I've never used that paint before and 
this was the paint Krylon Duel. And if you have watched the videos back from a couple years ago in the winter time when I was doing the Taylor Craft, I was on the phone with Krylon several times talking to their chemist to figure out why this paint would attack itself. And even by going through the the, the, the rules that they told me to use the, uh, on how long it is, it's either you got to do it like within, let's just say you got to spray it within like 40 minutes or an hour. I can read through, but either within the first two hours or you got to wait 72 hours. I waited over a week and it still lifted the paint underneath it. Um, I found out you have to put on multiple very light coats and then, so say that uh, my second coat was going to be a light coat, put a light coat on top of it and then as soon as you came over and touched it with your finger and it was getting tacky, then you put on a heavy coat and it wouldn't lift. But I also found out that if I use automotive primer, so say I was going from, like on this one, I'm going to be going from yellow to spraying black on top of the yellow. If I didn't want it lifting anything up, like the yellow and everything else underneath it, uh, I would use automotive primer between the yellow and the black. So regardless, that's what I will be doing, is you shooting some automotive primer and then shooting the black on top of it. And then I never had a problem with it after that. So anyway, last but not least, I have a special brush that's near and dear to my heart. This brush started its journey in life with me back in probably 1987, 1988, yeah, yeah, I'm old, and the brush is from about 1988, I ended up taking a class with the community, uh, with, the, with, the, with the village, it was like an arts class, just because uh, I had done painting with oils uh, back, my grandmother taught me how to paint with oils, um, and to me, I found oils relatively easy because you're just putting paint on top of paint. So I went and took a, a class with watercolor. And oh boy, what watercolor can do to you. Uh, you have to start off light colors and go to dark colors. There's no other way around it. So you, you learn how to correct your mistakes. I never kept anything. Uh, was not, uh, it was not impressed. I, it wasn't, I didn't have the patience for it. It wasn't my style of painting. Uh, but I did keep the brushes, and this is the brush I use for putting the nitrate dope on the fabric itself because it doesn't leave strings behind. If you've got a cut brush like this, it's going to leave little strings behind. And if you don't pull them out right away, it, you're going to have to try to sand it out of the uh, off of fabric. And once this is bonded, bonded down to the fabric, it doesn't want to come off. So I ended up going with this, and this one, for as many years as I've used it, it's done shedding. It, it, does, it no longer sheds, um, so this thing works out great for fabric. So uh, if you can find it, you, I'm sure they still make them. There's no name left on it, but you're just looking for a watercolor brush. And it's a, it's a typical, you know, like a nylon fabric, um, and it's a very, very fine bristle. So it works out great. You just got to take good care of them. So anyway, after hearing that, welcome to the world of going old school, covered with fabric. And there's no adhesive to the back side of it or anything. You get to do all the hard work yourself. So and because I didn't open it up to show you uh, the aluminum paste, and it's a good thing you don't have smell of vision because this does not smell good at all. It's a real paste. It's aluminum. It's aluminum in some kind of, and I don't even know what it is. I don't, it's, I've got no idea. All I know is it's, uh, yeah, it don't smell good at all. It's actually not good for you, so don't eat it, kids. Don't eat it. Um, so anyway, what you do is you just take a little bit, and it's not that much at all. And uh, I normally put it inside the dope, the nitrate dope. Uh, if this was for, for like the airplane when I'm doing it, if I'm going to use this stuff when I'm doing it, uh, because it's your final coat that you put on. After you've done all your sanding, you put this on, then you paint it. Um, if I'm gonna put it in here, I'll probably use about half of it. And then uh, with the hopes that you're gonna put enough aluminum paste inside there, because if you don't have enough paste in, you're gonna end up putting another coat on, which adds more weight. So that's kind of why I'm kind of half, pretty much so thinking that uh, I may just try uh, just primer. We'll see what happens. So, anyway, let's call this a video. And I thank you all for watching. And uh, I'll start sanding the beast. And then uh, when the time comes to start putting on nitrate dope, um, I'll bring you guys back just so you can enjoy the fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs>